Um, as Stephanie said, I'm Angie Amburn, and I'm married to Brian. We have four kiddos. Their ages are nine, six, five, and two. Um, and don't you know, yeah, I am from Minnesota. <laughs> We've been in Erie for about six years now, but my story is going to start back in Minnesota um, along the banks of the Mississippi River. God spoke to me one day in a small chapel at the university where we attended school, and um, I did not hear it with my ears, but nonetheless, I almost felt like I should have. It was so clear as day, and he said to me, my name is I Am not I was or I will be. My name is I am. And you see, I needed to learn that lesson because I'm a dweller. I focus on the past and I worry too much about the future. And living like that is emotionally exhausting. Sometimes I feel like I'm underwater and I'm like grasping at the surface and it's in sight, but I've got this brick changed to my ankle and I can't get a breath. And I know that I'm not the only person in this church who ever feels like that. But God said, my name is I am. So let's fast forward those 12 years. We come up to last winter. I'm away on retreat. And I'm still underwater because I'm a slow learner. And I'm praying the Stations of the Cross. And I get to the station of Christ dying on the cross. And I think oh my gosh, I am not willing to die on the cross. I'll look at it. I'll talk philosophically about it all day long. I'll even pick up my cross like a good disciple and I'll carry it, but no way am I going to die on it. So I looked at the Lord and I said, you know what, I don't really understand that about myself. I don't even really know what that means practically for my life. Will you please show me? Well, he did. Later in the spring, this past spring, I was reading a book. It was about the life of Mother Julia and the founding of the spiritual family, The Work. So if any of you know Sister Josephine here at St. George or Sister Kathleen who teaches down at Gannon, this is the religious order that they belong to. Well, the Lord used this book and a quote from Mother Julia to help me understand what this all means. Uh, Mother Julia says, you need to accept the reality of your situation. Accept the reality of your situation. The past is past, and the future is in God's hands. And I was like, oh my gosh. That's just like when God says, my name is I am, not I was or I will be. And then there was another quote from Mother Julia that I want to use tonight um, that God really used to open this up to me. She says it is in doing your duty that you encounter the will of God. It's in doing your duty, and I realize that the will of God for my life is not necessarily some lofty, overarching ideal. The will of God for my life is in the present. It's in the daily duties that I have as a wife and a mother. For children, when you go to school and you do your homework and you obey your parents, you're doing God's will in your life. When we change diapers and wipe macaroni and cheese up off the floor and make dinner, we're doing God's will. When we talk to our grandkids and attend their football games, we're doing God's will. When we scrub a toilet, when we go to work, whether we're doctors or whether we're janitors, we're doing God's will. He says, my name is I am. And I'm not always good about living this out. I really haven't quite got it all worked out yet. Um, About a few weeks ago, we woke up one morning to hearing a neighbor screaming. Not like, yeah, I won the lottery scream. Like, I'm in the middle of a horror movie scream. And there was somebody just booking it down the street outside. So we jump out of bed. We run out to see what in the world is going on. There's an ambulance across the street. We don't want to pry, so we leave it alone for the moment. But we find out later that someone around the corner from us had passed away in their sleep. And their family was just waking up that morning to realize that it was one of the worst days of their life. 
and nobody had given them the memo, letting them know it was coming. And later that day, it dawned on me, I had been up five times that night with the kids. Somebody wet the bed, people were coughing, people needed to blow their nose, there was no toilet paper in the bathroom, etc. I'd been up five times, and all I did during those five times that I was awake that night was complain and be bitter and wonder why in the world is my sleep being disrupted. And across the street from me, somebody had died. And if I had just taken a moment to say, Lord, I just offer this to you, I could have prayed for that person, offered that sacrifice for them, when no one had even known that they had passed on yet. But I didn't because I couldn't accept the reality of my situation. But God says that my name is I am, not I was, and not I will be. So how do we work all this out? For me, I find that I just need to be with Jesus. Every time I come to him in the Eucharist, I get to know myself better, and I get to know the I am better. And in a few moments, we're going to see our Lord, the great I am, the God of the universe, physically present to us in the Eucharist. Let's just take a moment and be with him like Moses was with him. I find that the great I am is always willing to meet me where I am, even if it's underwater, and he always moves me forward. And most of the time, God probably doesn't want to change my reality, but what he wants to do is to be in my reality. And I get chill bumps thinking about that because I went to confession just now before me to worship, and what, <laughs> Father Jonathan, in his advice to me, he says, Angie, I think that you need to just make God a part of your reality. And I start to cry, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just what I'm going to say tonight. So they say that when someone gives a speech, 90% of what they say is what they need to hear. And I guess tonight that's been true. My name is I am, not I was or I will be. We need to accept the reality of our situations and find God's will for us in our daily duties.